everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back. In this video, we are going to have fun playing with another little dancing die. I love these. I did one of these in the Christmas season last year, and I'll link that video up in the corner for you or down below in the description box where I did a little dancing girl holding up some packages. It was so cute. And I couldn't help myself. I needed the little dancing ghost. I think this is adorable. So I'm going to take my little spin on this. I think it's going to be super fun. I also really like this idea for a little scalloped border. So I'm going to bring that in and we're going to just have a lot of fun. So first and foremost, I am going to bring in a tiny little die cutting machine because as you can tell, all these pieces are teeny tiny. So this is a perfect little project for a mini cutter. So I have my little cutting plates here. I think what I'll do is open this up and let's cut up some candy. I'm going to start out with the candy. I'm gonna grab a little candy piece. One thing I love about Spellbinders is they put the little shadow behind so that I know where to line everything back up. But I'm going to place this right on my machine plate here, okay, and run this right through. And I want to do a lot of colorful candy not too much, but I'm thinking some mint pieces will be cute. Oh my goodness, how cute are those? That's adorable. Okay, maybe some mint pieces. Also, I pulled, I think this is a lilac color. So I'll do that, and then I also want to do a gold. I think that will be fun as well. So everything that I'm using will be linked below in the description box, that way you can shop what you need to create this card, or if you just wanna add any of these things to your card making collection. All right, we have that. And then finally, we have the gold, which I think is so pretty. Now, everything aside from the gold that I'm using is going to be Concord Ninth cardstock. I just love their colors. Their color palette is so me. It always makes it really fun too kind of color match. Okay, I'm only running this through twice because I'm lazy and I don't want to run it through the entire length. But there we go. Okay, there we are. So I can place this little one right back here. Nope, not that it matters, but to me it does. Okay, and then I have my little candies. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and off camera continue selecting some cardstock pieces, cutting these all out, and we will start gluing and constructing this cute little dancing card. Okay, so I have all of my pieces done here, and I thought it would be fun. I'm not sure I'm gonna go with the wording, but I did cut it out. I thought it would be fun to do a little pink pumpkin. And again, I am using Concord and Ninth colors, so this is nectar, and then I have mushroom for this color. I think this is grapefruit and then lilac, sea glass, and then this is just something that I had from Michael's, a nice shiny um, metallic piece. Okay, so let's go ahead. I did cut this out because I need to add some little eyes behind my ghost. So I'm going to just place that there, but also trim it down. There we go. That way. Just add a little bit behind here. And I'm honestly just gonna add between the eyes, maybe a little bit around because I'm gonna further attach this to the card. So I really just need to tack this in place. Oops, I think I did that the wrong. No, I'll be fine. Okay, does that look okay? Bring my scissors in and then just snip there. Okay, so there's my little ghost. And my ghost will be holding, and I have this here so I can kind of get an idea. Oh, okay, so this has a little opening here. See that? And this has a little opening. The only one I was not sure about was this piece. I have no idea what this little triangle is. If you know, let me know in the comment section because I would love to know. I've been just scratching my head. 
Also, you also can opt to do a little sack instead of the pumpkin. So you have that option as well. Okay, first I'm going to attach the handle to my little pumpkin bucket. Okay, teeny tiny pieces. So patience here. If you have been around my channel for a couple minutes, you know I love this kind of stuff. I don't do it often, but when I do, I enjoy it just because it's fun. Okay, is that the way it's supposed to go? Nope, it's not. It's supposed to go on top. Okay, hold on, that's okay. So actually what I'll do is bring in some tweezers. I'm gonna need to clean up some glue here too. I'll bring in some tweezers and I'll add just little dots of glue here and then just so it doesn't seep out, I'm just going to dab it off a little bit. That way it's just kind of tacky. And sorry, I'm gonna to try to keep this within camera and I'll attach that there one at a time. Okay, that makes more, much more sense. So let's get, I'm gonna need this little wand in a bit, I believe. But let's get this cleaned up. We'll keep this to the side. All right, before, let's see, what did I use this for? I'm not even quite sure. But I also probably want a little bit of paper. Oh, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to do a little pink faced pumpkin. I thought that would be cute. So let me see how much I'm going to need. Probably just a little itty bit. And maybe just there for starters. Okay, that looks cute. And then I probably will just sneak my scissors in here and go like that. I like that, I think that's adorable. Okay, I'm gonna be careful not to close. Maybe I should put my candy in here first. And I'm gonna go with the um, sea glass color, I believe, because I think the contrast will be enough. Maybe I can put sea glass and gold in. That would be cute, let's do that before I attach the back. I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue here. And let's layer a couple of the candy pieces. So we have this sea glass and I'm just using that little opening to tuck that right underneath. I also like that it kind of mends the area that the handle is attached to the pumpkin. You kind of just don't see that as much. Not that it, it looked bad, it didn't by any means, but Oh, cute. Okay. I don't want to do too much, though, that we can't put that... Oh, no, the handle will be fine. That almost looks a little too... Um, I need to maybe bring one out a little bit. There. Almost looked a little too uniform. I think that looks cute. Okay, on the back, it's not coming into contact with anything else, but what I'll do is I'm going to bring in a little bit of tape and I'm just going to tape that in place and you'll never see it but it's there okay just giving it a little additional support now I will grab my glue and put some in here that way we can add this little piece and all I want this piece to do is just cover up the little jack-o-lantern face so we have a little kind of pink opening that is adorable i love that okay let's wipe that down it's hard not to get glue everywhere with tiny pieces like this i'm gonna use the other end of my little wand and what i'm gonna do is just kind of swipe the additional glue this is for some reason oddly satisfying to me i love this part it takes it right up and it just cleans it up if you get a little too much, which which is my middle name. I just get a little too much glue. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this right on. Stop, how cute is that? Okay, what I think I'll do is I'll leave that there and just 
start placing glue. Okay. There we go. That is so darn cute. How adorable. Okay. Ooh, my, my glue is kind of seeping through the back because there's some openings there. That's okay. This I'm going to call this segment. Make sure you have a baby wipe. Okay. There we go. Tack that off. Now, let's set that little cutie to the side and work on the little leggings. So this is the little cut, but I want to have little stripes on her leggings. So I went ahead and just cut or just put this to the side. I'm going to have some tiny little strips here. So I'm thinking, let me turn this around. I'm thinking like an eighth of an inch. Let's see what that does. And I'm just going to peek those right behind. And that is going to be so much easier than paper piecing little pieces inside. I'm just going to place it right behind. Okay, that might be a little too thin. Nope, it's gonna work. Okay, so what I think I'll do here is let's measure how much we need. Okay, so I'm placing this on the back. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Let's not make this hard. I'm going to add my glue. I'm going to tap it off, okay? Not all of it, of, of course, but just make it tacky. I'm going to place it over the little opening. I'm not going to get too precise with measuring because it's not going to matter. And then I'm going to just do that. Okay, then we have our little leggings. Very cute. Okay, let's do the same thing here. Add a little bit of glue, just a little tack it down, place, just like that, oops, give it some time to set though, there we go, and then snip, okay, it doesn't matter what the back looks like because you're never going to see it, all right, so this is going to be what our cute little ghost looks like, how sweet. Now, I think what we're ready to do is build the card up. So I have my little card base here, but what I want to do is instead of having it in a little rectangle, and this is at the A2 size, what I will do is I'm going to use that little scallop die to cut around. Let's, let's make sure that this is the right size. Oh yeah, that's going to be cute. I'm going to grab a little bit of tape to secure this. I'm also going to just very quickly do a little cleanup as to get a little less overwhelmed here. And then let's go ahead and build the card up. Cutting machine, larger cutting machine because we need some more space here. And let's place all of our pieces in here. Okay, I'm gonna place this at an angle just to slide that through nice and smooth. And let's go ahead and cut. Let's see how that turned out. And I think it has even a stitched border as well. That is adorable. How cute. Kind of just makes it a cutesy, cutesy ghost card too, which is where I'm at for Halloween. I'd like it cute. I don't like it spooky. All right, now let's get an idea for what we want to do here. That's super sweet. We could even do you know, we could even do a colored card base gasp because I don't do that often. That would be really cute. I'm going to trickle down some candy here. Um, let's play around with that concept. Okay, what would it look like if we did... And, and this grapefruit is looking much more orange on camera than it really is. It's more of a pink color. But what if we did something like that? I don't know. I would go with, let me pull the, the um, nectar. But I can tell you right now I'm probably not going to do it because 
It's one of my favorite colors and I only have a couple pieces left. Okay, and I know that's so silly to like hoard your craft supplies, but I just, I need to reorder. Okay, but that's the right choice. But it's the right choice. I'm gonna have to do it. Okay, I'll place an order. <laughs> I'll place an order. Let's go ahead and cut. I don't know, now I'm not, now I'm not sure. That's cute too. No, we gotta do the colored card base. Partly because it's probably, I don't know, partly because it's cute, partly because it makes me uncomfortable. I don't ever do it. So let's just, let's just do it. Okay, I'm not gonna bring my huge guillotine trimmer in here. So I'll just go ahead and trim this down. We're gonna trim this at four and a quarter. So there, looks good. Okay, now let's go ahead and make our card base. Okay, the only reason I'm kind of skipping ahead to this part is because I wanna be sure that this is what I wanna do. So now we have our card stock at 11 by four and a quarter. We'll place that middle score line at five and a half. Okay. This is a little bit lighter of cardstock than I usually use for a card base, but it'll work out just fine. Okay. But let's just get an idea. I wanna see if that's what I should do, which I really think I should. Yep. That's gonna to be too cute. Okay, we need to pause though, because I think what I'm going to do is bring in some wording here. I'm not quite loving the hey boo. Um, I don't think at least, I don't know. I'm just not, I kinda of wanna do something with just a really simple, I even kinda of like hey shorty. <laughs> I think that's kind of cute. Should I do it? I think I'm gonna do it. I think that's hilarious. It's so cute because there's just like a kind of tiny little ghost there. All right, so let's go ahead, bring in a mini Misty, get an idea. We can do all of our placement right in here and let's get an idea of where we want everything to go. So if I do the legs and the ghost right about there, then I have a little bit of room down here for the little hay shorty. Okay. Put that here. I think that's so cute. It just kind of grounds it too. Oops, is it a little place to be? Okay, I'm not going to overthink that. I think that looks good. I'll remove all of my other little elements. This is nice and snug in the corner. I'm not gonna press too hard because I don't want it to smush. It's a nice, fine text and font, so I don't want to make it bold by over pressing it down. Okay, there it is, that's really cute. All right, put that away. Now we get to build our card from the ground up and get this card dancing, which is the funnest part, but I always, do my best to put my stamps away, especially this stamp set because it is so tiny that it's easy to lose it. All right, let's open up our card base, place it right on the mat here. And I will add foam tape to the back of this because I would like to have just a little fun shadow of dimension there. So, little strip. All right. Now, don't forget if you want to add a stamped sentiment, don't forget to do it before this part because you want a nice flat piece to stamp on. Sometimes I forget and then I have to redo it. All right, that looks center. Let's place that down. Okay, that's really cute. Now, we need to get this all situated. So the legs, I think we're here. And then we have that. You can even bring the legs down just a smidge, but, but not too much. I think right there is perfect. Now to attach these, 
I am going to use a teeny tiny little foam square. Okay. Place it right there. And I'm going more towards the top just because I like the placement there. If I went in the middle, then that would bring it down even more. The legs would fall down even more. And I like where I'm, or I'm out there. I'm also going to test and make sure, I always want to make sure that, you know, my legs aren't going to come in contact with a sentiment or anything like that. So this is the time to be sure of your placement. Okay, now I'm going to grab bigger foam squares and I'm going to add those pieces to the top here. Now, you don't want to add them down here because then your legs won't move. Okay, because then you would be adding foam here and then these wouldn't move. So when I'm doing this, I'm going to just stay kind of visually where I put that gray cardstock. So I'll do some here and here. It's kind of peeling off. And here, and I'm going to get an idea for how that feels, which I think that's fine. So now peel that off. I'm also going to peel off the little backer on my tiny one that's holding my legs or anchoring them really. And let's put this piece there. Okay, now let's do a little test. Make sure that the legs swing. They do. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Okay, let's add a couple additional pieces of candy if we find that it's needed. And then I'm gonna add a tiny bit of shine and we will be done. I think this is super sweet. So I like the idea of some of this candy kind of being down here. Do I though? Hmm. I don't know. I kind of do. It kind of gives it some like, like that the candy's kind of just falling out, right? Let's see, I could have one piece kind of tucking from under. What we need to be careful here though is that, ooh, we need to be careful because we don't want that candy to stop our legs from swinging. Mm. I think it'll be fine. I really do. Especially if I maybe moved this one and then put this one here. Because really we just want this to go just about that far. Actually, that was better where I had it originally. I liked that better. I'm going to do it. I think it's going to be fine because we're still getting some swing motion. We're going to be good. And in order to finish that, I'm going to add the tweezers to pinch them down for just a second so I can do my glue. Okay, so I have this kind of tucked in there. And then I'll do these two pieces. Final little one. I'm trying to make it not to be too methodical, so maybe just there, mm, there. Okay. Do you like that? I have this little aura sequins from Spellbinders as well that I just want to get an idea of what that would look like. It kind of has a holographic look to it to put on the little candies. They also have other little enamel dots that I think would be super cute. So hold on, that would be really cute. I might do that, like a little tone on tone thing if I can find the correct one. Or I could do the clear. I'm gonna do the clear, that's adorable. Okay, I'm gonna do clear. Oh, so cute, right on there. It takes the search of tone on tone out and it gives it something without too much. Okay, I'm also going to attempt one here yeah, that's cute. But how do I do the next one? Maybe if I just went a size smaller for this little piece. Okay. No, I'm just going to put it on the one. I think the other one doesn't need it. I'll grab my little 
piece here. Okay, I'll put it right back on there. That's really cute. I like that. Okay, you know what? That is done. I love how that turned out. It's simple, but it's fun. And these little um, enamel dots, they're so smooth that if the legs came into contact with them, they're just sliding right over them. So it's not like a harsh lip of a sequins. Instead, it's nice and flat and smooth. So I think that that is a great choice for there. So that did really well. I don't want to make you dizzy, but you can kind of see how... <laughs> Yeah, that's making me dizzy. Okay, so they swing. You got your little dancing ghost. Hey, shorty. That's so fun. I hope this was fun to watch. Again, I'll place a link to the Christmas version that I did for this. I think I might even have an additional Christmas one that I might do this year because I had to buy all the little dancing people. They were so cute. But here is the cute little Halloween version. I think it's adorable. Be sure to give this a thumbs up if you did enjoy watching. And if you made it this far in the video, please be sure to give me a little pumpkin emoji down in the comments. That way I know you made it all the way to the end. And if you did, you're awesome. All right, everyone. See you soon.